this strikes me as not the not right. All right, I'm, I'm going to continue. I'm pretty sure there's a mistake in here somewhere. Uh, I'm going to continue and see if you can tell me where the mistake is, or how how do I know there's a mistake? F would be that minus three, so that's 0.4. So F is negative 2.6. All right, so how do I know there's got to be a mistake there? Oh, because that's uh, the six kilogram mass is now going in the same direction, which is impossible because it bounced off. And the four kilogram mass? Is also going in the same direction. Yeah, so what, they pass through each other. Just uh -huh. phase through. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now let's see where the mistake is. All right, so negative eight was what we had. That was the total momentum because it was six times two minus four times five, negative eight. And then I have six and four of my masses. E and F, those are my finals. And then the relative speed of approach. So I did two minus five. Oh! You noticed. I don't, I don't Pardon? I didn't notice that. These are velocities here. What's the initial velocity of the four kilogram mass? Negative five, so it'd be two plus five. Uh, Two minus negative five. Oh, so. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? Can you say again? When I did the relative speed of approach, when I subtracted V A initial minus V B initial, it should have been two minus negative five, not two minus five. So this is plus seven. This is plus 14. This is negative 18. So B becomes negative 3.6. And F becomes 3.4 meters per second. There might still be a mistake, but at least this is, they bounce off, they hit each other and they bounce in opposite directions. Okay. I mean, it, and they're not always going to bounce in opposite directions. I mean, they, they could hit and then one of them could continue in the same direction, but the other one would have to turn around. How does that work? How could you have a, um, a perfectly elastic collision and one of the objects continue in the direction? Think truck and bug. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. that's a perfectly like, inelastic collision usually, but if the bug, bug bounces off of you, I still would not expect the truck to bounce back. Okay, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> but both objects can't stay in the same direction. One of them, one of the directions has to change for yes. one of the objects. So. Yes. The impulse is what that's like the truck just goes. <laughs> they exert the same magnitude of impulse on each other because they exert the same magnitude of force and they do it for the same amount of time. But one being way bigger, the size, what would you want to bounce back? back? In that case, I mean, in, in this case right here, uh, my total, the initial momentum was negative. So I know that whatever happens, if they both go in the same direction, it's got to both be negative, mm -hmm. if they went in the same direction. Okay, but we know, so now we know that. That they actually get going off, and then they bounce away from each other. Yes. And then method three, I'm a fan of that one. Oh, you can do it we got the six of the four here. The initial velocity was two and negative five. I then want to subtract the negative point eight. So I get 2.8 and negative 4.2. Flip the signs, because that's when they collide. Negative 2.8 plus 
and then reverse what we did here. So plus negative 0.8. And so we get negative 3.6 and 3.4, which is what we have here. Can you do the first way? <laughs> I'm sorry. You know how you you said at the beginning you're like focus on one way and know how to do it. <laughs> yeah, and, and so you know I understand. Them. I don't know if there's been a class where there haven't been three different techniques attempted. On the test, so let's see. Let's clear this. And you said like the downside of number uh, the way number two is that you don't really know like if you when you got this right because like, in the in way number one I remember there was like if there's a way to know like at the end if something was up yeah and this doesn't have that but you don't have to deal with like I think you said you don't have to deal with the calculus part of it no with quadratic the quadratic. quadratic equation so we got to concentrate the technique one got to conservation of a mineral problem, then our equation, and then conservation of energy, kinetic energy is the other one. So I got one half, six times two squared plus one half, four times five squared is equal to one half, six e squared plus one half, four f squared. And that's just kinetic energy total before is equal to after. 12 plus 50 is equal to 3e e squared plus 2f squared. 62 is equal to 3e e squared plus 2f squared. And so I need to solve for one of the letters and plug it into the other equation. So Let's take this one. So I got negative 4 is equal to 3e e plus 2f. Oh. <laughs> and uh, let's solve for f. So I got negative 4 minus 3e e is equal to 2f. f is equal to negative 2 minus 1.5e. E. Plug it into here. Well, 2f is fine, right? Can we just plug in 2f like that? No, because it's squared, right? Like, wouldn't that, could we turn that into negative 4 minus 3e e squared? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, this 2 is, that 2 is not being squared. It's just being yeah. squared. Okay, okay. I mean, there, so you still gotta go through that step to get it down to that. Yeah. Plug it back in. Like that. When you say you got to, I mean, there's, again, there's lots of different ways. Um, I, I recommend getting down here and then plug it in just for F. All right. So 62 is equal to 3 E squared plus 2 times negative 2 minus 1.5 E squared. So 62 equals <laughs> Sorry, the monk side of me, the dream monk side of me. Kicked in. It's 3 e squared plus 2 times 4 minus 6 e plus 6 e plus. 2.25 e squared. 62 equals 3 e squared squared plus 8 plus 12 e plus 4.5 e squared. So now it becomes a quadratic equation. Yes. The quadratic equation, you use the quadratic formula, you set it equal to zero. Completing the squares, you would get the e's on one side and non-e's on the other. But let's get it into the difficult formula form here. So that's 7.5e e squared plus 12e e minus 54. 
Completing the square is basically you're deriving the quadratic right formula. Oh, okay. And like, now you can use quadratic formula. Do you expect us to do that? Like, do you expect us to derive the quadratic that we no. have to do this? Okay, good. Not not I, don't, I don't know how to complete the square. I forgot. <laughs> now, what that one was So you get it down to that, and then you added up like terms to get that 7.5 squared, right? Yep. Yes. And then where did that 12b come from? That came from here. The when I squared this, the middle term, a plus b squared is a squared plus two ab plus b squared. Yeah. So it comes from the two times that times that. Square. Which gives me the six, and then distributing that two gives me the twelve. Got negative three point six. You got negative three point six. And then the other solution was two. Which is what you would expect. So we've done something right here because two was our non-collision solution. Because that's how fast that was going to begin with. But we know they did collide because that's the problem. So there's that answer. And then you plug into well, probably here to figure out what F is. And I'm thinking somewhere around 3.4. Trusting that is 3.4? 3.4. Yeah. <laughs> to make sure. Okay. And you can always have a problem like that, do it all three ways to see if you get the same answer because you'll have <laughs> typically plenty of time, right? Usually, yeah. A couple hours to spare. That's right. But I do want to go home at some point. So that's a momentum problem. Yeah. We've done some energy problem, a momentum problem, a uh, moment of inertia problem. Moment of inertia gets in play. That's what really confuses me. Like, well, the simple ones, it's you plug into a formula. Yeah, and then like there's another one. I saw one on there where it's like rotating around like so many different things. So many. You're talking the pendulum right there? Yeah, like it's like you gotta rotate around like so many different things. Like what's the moment of inertia if you rotate around like point A or point B or something? Oh, any questions before I erase? <laughs> <laughs> After doing the problem three times. <laughs> three times the thought. That's great. So that the pendulum problem is I got a basically that's the scenario right there. I have 0.2 meters, uh, 1.6 meters, and this was 0.8 meters. The radius of the disc is 0.4 meters, so that works. Mass of disc, so mass is 3 kilograms of the disc. Uh, mass of the thin rod is 0.5 kilograms. And it rotates from the, about this point right here. So this is the axis of rotation. We have to add the moment of inertia. Yeah. So the, I broke it down into five parts. First part is what's the moment of inertia of the disc if we're spinning about its own center? So if it's spinning about this point right here, what's the moment of inertia? One half three times 0.4 squared. Whatever that is. 
Why is it MR squared and not ML squared? It's the disk. Oh, uh, okay. Is it usually MR squared? For round things, yeah, it's usually radius pops in. Okay. So that's all moment of inertia is literally just plugging it into whichever formula that you found in your given yeah. object. Yeah. Uh, that, that is without one. Would, you'll give us the moment of inertia formulas on the test? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So <laughs> that point eight is supposed to be like. The yeah, I gave you. What did you just say? You gave us. I gave three of them here. Yeah. Thank you. Diameter. Yeah. yeah. And then it's just plug in. Okay. So I just get confused cool. sometimes when I'm trying to like create the formulas when they're not given. Yeah. Ah. Now the formula. All right. So we'll get into the ones that are not explicitly given. All right. So that one's a given. Like the ones with yes. the hoop. Like the ones with the hoops. You know, like the, the hoop, I'm trying to find the moment of inertia there, that's the problem. So, you just really confused. Okay. If that makes sense. Uh, I, I think so. I think we're going to get to something similar to where your confusion lies, so that we can confuse you all over again. That's that, that's a curse. All right, moment of inertia of the rod if it were spinning about its own center. So, we got this 1.6 meter long rod spinning about this point right here. That's another formula is given. If it's rotating about its own center, assume the formula is given. What, 12 uh, uh, length? Or, ah, wait. 112 yeah, yeah. mass times length squared. It's always going to be a, a mass term and then some sort of distance term squared. Where did the 112 come from? I'm yeah. sorry. Where did the 112 come from? Derive it. It's the formula. Oh, that's, so, that's, so that's given. Yeah. yeah. Now, what was the length? Yeah, again, moment of inertia spending about its own center, probably look through the first page. Would the or length be the one? That should be given there. over. It's not there, just ask and I'll write it up. Okay. So I got 1 12th times 0.5 times 1.6 squared. Oh, okay. And that's equal to something. Why would it be 1.6 instead of the 0.2? Because this is the rod. Oh, when would it be the 0.2? The point, that's coming up. Okay. The, because the question asks for rotating about its own center of mass, this point right here. Uh, it's, okay. so, it's a uniform rod. Although I, I think it's written in the problem, but I did not state that explicitly. Because you're supposed to read my mind. <laughs> Again, stay away from the scary parts. The moment of inertia of the disk if we're rotating about point A. So now we get to the rotating about point A. So, so we we know what the moment of inertia is rotating about this point, but we are but the axis is not there, the axis is here. It is parallel. Parallel axis theorem. Uh, the moment of inertia rotating about point A is going to be the moment of inertia rotating about its center plus mh squared, where h is distance the axis move. Oh, so it'd be 1.8. So it's whatever that is plus the mass, which is three, times that distance right there. So it'd be like, uh, 1.8. 1.8, yeah. So 0.4 plus 1.4, yeah, so 1.8 squared. Again, whatever that is. And that's just the parallel axis there? Yes. Okay. Is that the point where this messes you up? I don't know what it is. I just remember seeing a problem somewhere. I may have just been doing like my own practice, not any of your problems. Okay. But it was a moment of inertia. There's like some, it was like a hoop. It was like, uh, it, I don't know, it was like, imagine like a duck tape roll. It was trying to calculate the moment of inertia. I'm like, I don't know. It just confused me. I didn't understand it. Why it was different. It looks so far different than it is. <laughs> That's when I was trying to like understand moments of inertia. I guess I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The only hoop ones I can think of is, I mean, you have a hoop here that, so a hoop, the moment of inertia of a hoop. MR squared. Yeah, just MR squared. Because all the mass is the same distance away from that, rotating about that point right there. And so if I just change the axis of rotation to anywhere, then I'm going to tack onto this plus the mass of the hoop times how far do we move the axis again? It's moving from here to some other point. But that has to be given to you. And that's H. Pardon? And that's H. That's H. Okay. okay. 
It's how far the parallel, how far you move the axis. So it's still parallel to what you first calculated. I guess we could have the hoop rotating about point there, or axis like that. And then, so, so every time we add that on, um, that get on to a problem, will it always be h squared, or is it specific to certain problems? That that no, the parallel axis theorem is basically this right here. It's always h squared. Always h squared. Okay. It, but again, you have to make sure that your it's the act, the new axis is parallel to the first axis you did. Oh, what if it's a parallel? Yeah. So if, if I figured out if I had a hoop rotating about that axis. I can do parallel axis there as long as the actual rotating axis rotation is parallel to it. I can't go from here to there. Oh. That's not a parallel axis, so parallel axis there is not appropriate. Or from here to here. There's such things that there to there is fine. Right. But there to there. But you fine. can't do this to that. Correct. Okay. Is there such thing as a perpendicular axis thing? I have not seen it. <laughs> hey, someone should make that their PhD. I know. So or maybe it'll be a test. I know what my life work is. is. Um, and then you do similar for the rod. The rod rotating about point A is you're moving the axis from its center to point A to point two, so point six is how far you move it. And then the total moment of rotation is just that you only add them just you only add the two for uh, rotating about the axis of A. That's it. Yeah. That, the problem was find the moment of inertia each rotating about the center. Find the moment of inertia of each around point A, and then what's the total moment of inertia? And that's just, okay. Just that. Oh, no, I haven't graded them yet. The marks, I was just underlining every third one because it helped me when I. I should have them graded by tomorrow. So, I have a question. Are you going to put those on what? Uh, I realize. Put the grids? Uh, like, if I remember. Like the gravity? That would be good. So, I have a question about the parallel axis. 